If you're wondering which HDR monitors are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal take. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. Asus uh, Roji Swift OLED PG32 UCDM. This 32 inch quantum dot OLED beast rocks a 4K resolution at 240 hertz. And damn, does it look good with those inky blacks and 1000 nits peak brightness in HDR. The picture quality is absolutely gorgeous with rich colors that make other monitors look like they're from 2010, but your wallet is gonna cry because this thing costs as much as a used car. The full screen brightness is still limited like every other OLED, so maybe don't put it directly opposite a sunny window unless you want to squint at your screen all day. Would I buy it? Yes, if I had money to burn, the picture quality and gaming performance are just too good to pass up. MSI MPG 271 QRX QD OLED. This 27 inch quantum dot OLED monitor hits hard with a 360 hertz refresh rate and response times faster than my ex ghosting me. The color are jaw-droppingly gorgeous and it gets bright enough at 250 nits for most situations but you'll need to run it in HDR mode and crank up the SDR brightness in windows to get the best performance. The price is steep for a 1440p display but at least it comes with a burn-in warranty so you won't have to sell your kidney twice. Would I buy it? Maybe. The performance is incredible, but the price makes me question my life choices. Asus Arage Strix OLED XG27 AQDMG. This 27 inch Wold monitor actually beats some quantum dot displays with its impressive 724 nits peak HDR brightness, which is pretty wild for a budget OLED. The 240 hertz refresh rate and near instant response time make games butter smooth, but the text clarity isn't great, so maybe don't use this for writing your next novel. It's cheaper than the quantum dot models while still delivering that sweet OLED contrast, though you're trading off some color vibrancy. Would I buy it? Yes, it's the perfect middle ground between price and performance. AOC Q27 G3 XMN. This budget champion comes swinging with mini LED backlighting and 336 dimming zones delivering HDR performance that'll make your eyes pop without making your bank account cry. It hits an impressive 1200 nits peak brightness in HDR and has fantastic contrast for a VA panel, though there's still some smearing with fast moving objects because while it's still a VA panel, the on-screen display is about as user friendly as a brick wall, but hey, at least the stand is fully adjustable. Would I buy it? Yes, it's the best bang for buck HDR monitor you can get right now. Dell Alienware AW3225QF. The image quality on this bad boy is absolutely insane. With deep blacks, incredible contrast, and colors that pop like fireworks on the 4K display running at 240 hertz. The HDR performance is fantastic with Dolby Vision support, though you'll need to download a firmware update to turn it off if it gets stuck. Classic Dell moment right there. The cooling fan is pretty quiet, but press your ear against it and you can hear it whispering sweet nothings to you. Would I buy it? Yes, it's basically perfect if you can stomach the price tag. LG32 GS95 UE. This monitor is like having two screens in one with its party trick of switching between 4K 200 and 40 Hertz and 1080p 480 Hertz modes. Perfect for when you can't decide if you want pretty graphics or competitive edge. The brightness hits 1300 nits peak in HDR, which beats the competition, but the matte finish might not be everyone's cup of tea. The built-in speakers actually don't suck thanks to some pixel sound magic, which is rare in the monitor world. Would I buy it? Yes, the dual refresh rate feature is actually useful, not just a gimmick. Samsung Odyssey OLED G8. Samsung went all in with this one, cramming in smart TV features that nobody asked for but might actually use. The HDR brightness is a bit disappointing at only 417 nits peak in a 10% window, making it look a bit dim compared to some mini LED monitors. The curved screen might mess with your productivity work, but hey, at least it makes gaming feel more immersive. Would I buy it? Maybe, wait, great for a small apartment where you need a TV and monitor combo, but the brightness is meh. Gigabyte Aorus Fo 27. Q3, this 360 hertz QD OLED beast comes with a three year burn-in warranty, which is Gigabyte basically saying, we dare you to break it. 
The gaming performance is butter smooth with that 0.03 millisecond response time, though good luck actually hitting 360 frames per second in modern games unless you've got a supercomputer. They slapped some RGB on the back because gaming monitor? Would I buy it? Yes, it's basically a perfect gaming monitor if you can live with 1440p resolution. Dell S2722 QC. Look, if you want a 4K monitor that won't destroy your wallet, but still looks crisp as hell with excellent text clarity, this might be your jam. Though the 60 Hz refresh rate means it's about as fast as my grandma doing parkour, the USB-C connectivity with power delivery is neat for a clean setup, but the HDR performance is pretty weak sauce since it lacks local dimming and has mediocre brightness. Would I buy it? No. The HDR performance is too weak for what we're looking for here. MSI MPG 341 CQPX. This ultra-wide beast rocks a quantum dot OLED panel that makes colors pop like fireworks and blacks deeper than my ex's soul, plus it's rocking a sweet 240 hertz refresh rate that'll make your games butter smooth. The HDR performance is solid with Display HDR True Black 400 hitting up to 988 nits in highlights, though the overall SDR brightness is a bit meh at around 230 nits. Would I buy it? Yes, the combination of OLED contrast and decent HDR performance makes this a killer choice. Inixin 27 M2V. This monitor is like finding a diamond in a bargain bin. It's rocking 1152 mini LED zones, hits up to 1200 nits peak brightness, and has a 160 hertz refresh rate that'll make your games look smooth as silk. The HDR performance is actually insane for the price, though there's some minor blooming and the off-axis viewing isn't great. Would I buy it? Yes, it's probably the best value proposition for HDR performance in this lineup. Samsung Odyssey Neo G7. Samsung went all out with this bad boy featuring their quantum mini LED tech that delivers some serious HDR punch with Visa Display HDR 600 certification. The contrast is fantastic and colors are rich as hell hitting 100% sRGB and 98% DCI-P3 though the 144Hz refresh rate might make competitive gamers cry a little. Would I buy it? Maybe. While the picture quality is fantastic, the price to performance ratio isn't as good as the Inokin. BenQ EX321UX, this beast packs a 32 inch mini LED display with 1152 dimming zones and can hit up to 1000 nits brightness, making HDR content look absolutely stunning. The colors are ridiculously accurate with 99% Adobe RGB coverage, though you might need to take out a small loan since it costs around $1,200. The 144Hz refresh rate feels a bit underwhelming compared to other monitors in this price range, but at least it comes with a fancy remote control to make up for it. Would I buy it? Maybe if I had money to burn and didn't care about having the absolute fastest refresh rate. Samsung Odyssey OLED G9. This massive 49-inch curved monster delivers incredible contrast with perfect blacks thanks to its OLED panel and rocks a 240 hertz refresh rate that makes everything buttery smooth. The screen is so damn wide you'll need to turn your head like you're watching a tennis match, but that 32-9 aspect ratio creates an immersive experience that's hard to beat. The brightness tops out at around 450 nits in HDR, which is kind of disappointing for the price but those deep OLED blacks make up for it. Would I buy it? No, my neck hurts just thinking about using this thing daily. MSI MPG 321 URX. This 32 inch QD OLED display hits the sweet spot with 4K resolution and 240 Hertz refresh rate. Plus it has USB-C with 90 watts power delivery if you're into that kind of thing. The panel gets bright enough to burn your retinas with HDR content while maintaining those perfect OLED blacks and it's actually reasonably priced compared to similar monitors. Just don't stare at static images too long or you might get burn in, but at least MSI included some decent OLED care features. Would I buy it? Yes, it's basically everything you want in a monitor without completely destroying your bank account. AOC AG 274 QZM. This 27 inch mini LED monitor pumps out some seriously bright HDR with its 576 dimming zones and 240 hertz refresh rate, making fast paced games look clean as hell. The factory color calibration is absolute garbage though. Everything looks like it was filtered through a pink Instagram filter until you fix it. For a thousand 
thousand bucks, you'd expect better out of the box performance, but at least it comes with a bunch of gaming features and a built-in KVM switch. Would I buy it? No, not when I can get better calibrated monitors for similar money. Dell AW3423 DWF. Listen, this monitor is absolutely insane with its quantum dot OLED panel delivering perfect blacks and a peak brightness of 1000 nits in HDR, making games look so good you might forget to actually play them. The ultra wide 34 inch screen with 3440 x 1440 resolution gives you plenty of space to multitask. Though console gamers will have to deal with black bars on the side since it doesn't support ultra wide gaming, the 165 hertz refresh refresh rate and 0.1 millisecond response time make everything buttery smooth, but damn, you better have a deep desk because this thing needs 15 inches just for the stand. Would I buy it? Yes. Because it's basically impossible to go back to regular monitors after experiencing this level of contrast and color. Asus PG27 AQDM. This bad boy rocks a 27 inch OLED panel with 240 hertz refresh rate that makes everything look crisp as hell. Plus, it hits up to 963 nits peak brightness in HDR, which is pretty damn impressive for an OLED. The anti-glare coating helps with reflections, but the HDMI 2.0 ports are limited to 120 hertz, which is kind of a bummer if you're planning to use it with current gen consoles. Text clarity isn't the best due to the weird subpixel layout, and you might notice some color fringing when working with documents, but hey, at least it comes with a burn-in warranty. Would I buy it? Maybe the higher refresh rate is nice, but the smaller screen size and text issues make it a tough sell against the Alienware. Thanks for watching, I hope this video helped you pick the HDR monitors for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.